Hello again, and here we are for some more Mathlicious Math. This is where the work you did in Chapter 9 might start paying off. If you made sure that you memorised and understood these patterns and you were able to adapt them, this means hopefully that when we see them in this format, you'll be able to recognise them and straight away be able to factorise them, rather than the way we did it previously in 10.4, factoring the trinomials. Um, and remember, when I use these patterns, the only difference is the plus and the minus. And in fact, I don't even memorise this one. If I have something that's A minus B, I just use minus B as my substitution in here and here, and it automatically gives me this. Okay, so let's try this. Let's see if we can see if this is a perfect square. So this must have been the A squared part. So what was that square rooted? 2Y. So this means this is a perfect square, and we know the A part is 2A. This part is probably what the B squared part is. So let's have a look at that one. Okay, so can we square root this? 9Z. So this is also a perfect square. So 9Z is the B part. Now we need to check the 2AB, the central part, if that's matching. So 2AB is 2 times the A value, which is 2Y, times the B value, which is 9Z. So you can try and do that in your head. And what do you notice? It equals 37YZ. So if we're looking at the original equation, we we're trying to see if it's a perfect square. That is a perfect square part. That is a perfect square, so it's okay. We tested the 36YZ, so all three parts uh, correspond to this pattern. So this means it is, it is a perfect square. Right. So that's the first example. If you want, you can copy that down first before you watch the second. Because the second example, you're going to try and do yourself. And you're going to test again now and see if this one is a perfect square. Okay, so you should have your own answer by now. So I'll go through the same procedure. This should be the a squared part. So let's see if it is a perfect square. You have to square root it. And yeah, if you do 3n all squared, you get 9n squared. So then the 49 also, we're going to test that. That should be the b squared part. Square root it, I get 7. So we know that the b is 7. So again, I need to check 2ab. Um, so that's, uh, whoops making a mistake, copied the wrong bit, 3n, I'm looking at the wrong bit, I should be looking there, 7 to there. So if you times that together, 7 times 3, 21, 42, so you get 42n. So what does that mean? Well, if we compare it to the original equation, that's good, that's good, but the problem here is that minus 21n does not equal 42n. So, it is not a perfect square, as those don't match. So, the problem is this. Okay, now, I could have realised it wasn't a perfect square before I'd done all this. Because if you remember, when you have, I'll write it again, 9 to a 2, 1n plus 49, this part has to be equal to... 2AB. And if you've got a 2 here, that means this is going to be even. And here, this is odd. So I could have seen it was not a perfect square straight away. And I didn't need to do any of the work in that. I just needed to say that. And if it's even, I know it's possibly a perfect square. Because you might have the A's and the B's don't, when they're added times together, even though they're made an even number, doesn't mean it's a perfect square. But it's possibly a perfect square still, still. But if it's odd, it's definitely not a perfect square. A nice little insight of understanding the patterns and being able to um, understand the concept and get the answer much quicker. Again, write those notes down, make sure you've got them, and then of course we're going to be practicing some of these types of questions.